Why did dinosaurs become dinosaurs? This release will not be quite ordinary. In it we will talk about why people began to call prehistoric creatures dinosaurs. Why dinosaurs, and not some kind of Jabberwocky? It all happened not so long ago, about 300 years ago. Considering that the last dinosaurs went extinct 65 million years ago. One British biologist named Owen was terribly interested in prehistoric creatures. After all, even then, people all over the world found the remains of unknown animals. But the most interesting thing is that these remains were once incredibly huge creatures. And so Owen decided to call these unknown creatures dinosaurs. The word dinosaur comes from the Greek dainos, which means terrible, terrible, and sorrows, which means lizard. A British scientist gave this term, referring to the size and grandeur of prehistoric animals. Mr. Owen called dinosaurs pachyderms, in the 19th century. People classified large and massively bodied hippos, elephants and rhinoceroses as pachyderms. Therefore, the word dinosaur sounds very majestic. When someone found dinosaur bones, Myths and legends were immediately born that the remains of terrible giants had been found somewhere. The giant bones found were considered the remains of giant people, which are described even in the Bible. Someone claimed that the bones remained from the time of the Trojan War. These remains may have belonged to Greek and Trojan heroes, and perhaps even the gods of Olympus. In the East, the bones found were considered to be the bones of dragons and attributed healing properties to them. And so one French scientist in 1818 determined that these bones belonged to giant lizards. In 1821, two completely new genera of unknown sea creatures were officially discovered. The first genus was called Ichthyosaurus or fish lizard. The second genus was given the name Plesiosaurus, which means close to lizards. A year later, two more new genera were discovered. These are Mosasaurus or Mosa river lizard and Megalosaurus, which means huge lizard. Two years later, new remains of an unknown creature were found in southern England. And after research, the fossil received a name Iguanodon. The name translates as Iguana Tooth, due to the similarity of the teeth of the found prehistoric reptile and the modern one. In the summer of 1832, during blasting operations at one of the industrial sites in Great Britain, bones dating back to the early Cretaceous period were discovered. This discovery was reported at a meeting of the Geological Society and these remains were given the name Hyliosaurus, which means forest lizard. Hyliosaurus is a representative of the armored ankylosaurus. In 1842, scientists created a special suborder, calling it Dinosauria, which means terrible lizards. At the time, it was believed that dinosaurs were huge, slow-moving reptiles that walked on four legs. Ga. And therefore, in the vicinity of London, sculptures of antediluvian reptiles were installed, as they were represented in the 19th century. Let's leave the UK and move to the American continent. The first dinosaur remains found in North America consisted of individual teeth, Three different types of dinosaurs. The first species was Trachodon or Rough Tooth, which belonged to Adrosaurs. The second species was Trudon or Wounding Tooth, which was a small theropod. The third species was Deinodon or Terrible Tooth, which represented the Tyrannosaurus. It was at that time that these discoveries changed the opinion of scientists that all dinosaurs were four-legged. The time of great paleontological discoveries has begun. It was truly the great dinosaur race. 
In a very short time, several species of herbivorous dinosaurs from the genus Diplodocus were discovered. These are Camarosaurus, Apatosaurus, and Brontosaurus. Several species of prehistoric predators and herbivores were also discovered. Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus, Stegosaurus, Monoclonus, and Triceratops. One after another, species of duck-billed dinosaurs appeared. These are Carithosaurus, Lambiosaurus, Sauralophus, Parasaurolophus, and many others. From the Ceratopsian genus, such species as Centrosaurus, Styracosaurus, and Pachyrhinosaurus were discovered. The species of predators of that time stood out especially clearly. Tyrannosaurids. These are Albertosaurus, Gorgosaurus, Daspletosaurus, and of course the Tyrannosaurus itself. In 1859, a British biologist made an astonishing discovery that changed our understanding of evolution. The scientist suggested that birds are descendants of dinosaurs. He studied the skeletons of Compsognathus, a small theropod dinosaur, and Archaeopteryx, an ancient bird. Both of these fossils were found in the same place. Comparing these skeletons, the biologist discovered striking similarities. Archaeopteryx had feathers and wings, but in many other ways its skeleton was very similar to that of Compsognathus. However, not all scientists agreed with their colleague. Some have argued that Archaeopteryx was the first bird not related to dinosaur evolution. Over the next century, the most popular theory remained that birds evolved not from dinosaurs, but from earlier reptiles such as crocodilomorphs and thecodonts. Direct evidence of the presence of feathers in dinosaurs appeared only in the mid-90s of the 20th century. In one Chinese province, numerous remains of small carnivorous dinosaurs with amazing feather imprints were discovered. These findings became a sensation in the world of paleontology, confirming the theory that many dinosaurs, including the ancestors of modern birds, were covered with feathers. These feathered dinosaurs helped scientists better understand the evolution of birds and confirmed the connection between ancient reptiles and modern feathered inhabitants of our planetity. Cynosauropteryx, Codipteryx, and even Microraptor with full-fledged bird feathers convinced the scientific community of the plumage of theropods, members of a large group of coelurosaurs, including the famous Tyrannosaurus. The presence of hair in Tyrannosaurids was confirmed in 2012, after the discovery of Euteranus. Today, scientists have firmly established that eight families of carnivorous dinosaurs from the theropod suborder had feathers. In addition, some Onithiscian dinosaurs, such as Cetacosaurus, Tyannulong, and Calendodromius, may have had feathers. These discoveries greatly expanded our understanding of the appearance and evolution of dinosaurs, revealing that feathers were much more common among these ancient animals than previously thought. The discovery of dinosaurs such as Velociraptor, Oviraptor, and Protoceratops changed our understanding of giant dinosaurs, demonstrating that carnivorous dinosaurs could have been quite small. During Soviet Mongolian expeditions in the 40s of the 20th century, Tarbosaurus, a relative of the famous T. rex, and an unusual Therizinosaurus were found. In 1965, the giant Dianokyra was discovered. Long-necked sauropods such as Mamonchosaurus and Omisaurus, as well as large predators such as Yanguinosaurus, Synraptor, and Gigantoraptor, have been found in China. In addition, many small feathered dinosaurs were discovered. The latest discoveries take us to South America, to Argentina. 
In 1985, Argentine paleontologists reported the discovery of two new predatory dinosaurs, Carnotaurus and Abelosaurus, belonging to a new family of theropods. In 1993, the remains of the largest titanosaur, Argentinosaurus, were found. And in 1995, the remains of one of the largest predators in the world, Gigantosaurus. These discoveries continue to expand our understanding of Earth's ancient inhabitants and their diversity. In the first half of the 20th century, the scientific community mistakenly believed that dinosaurs were slow and bulky creatures. However, starting in the 1970s, research began to show that dinosaurs were active animals with high metabolic rates. Moreover, they developed various features for social interaction, which greatly changed humanity's views on their behavior and ecology. Do not forget from which animals the first dinosaurs appeared. Of course, from archosaurs. Here are some species that are worth paying attention to. Proterosuchidae, Erythrosuchidae, and Euparcaria, found in geological strata dating back about 250 million years ago, and Middle Triassic archosaurs such as Tisinosuchus, of which crocodiles are also descendants. Other archosaurs that are also close to early dinosaurs include Legerpatin, Marasuchus, and Silosaurus. The first dinosaurs that we know of were small bipedal predators up to 7 feet long. The earliest of these include Sauriscian dinosaurs such as Nyasosaurus, Saturnalia, Herosaurus, Storcosaurus, Eoraptor, and Alwalkyria. These dinosaurs laid the foundation for the evolution of many future species. Early theropods, such as members of the group Coelophysoidea, including Coelophysis and Tawahali, lived in the late Triassic and early Jurassic. These predators showed that dinosaurs could be quite active and fast. The largest early predators included ceratosaurs, followed by basal titanurids, including megalosaurids and spinosaurs. Fossils of these dinosaurs date from the mid-Jurassic to the end of the early Cretaceous, about 180 to 94 million years ago. Research suggests that these groups of dinosaurs diverged from the evolutionary line leading to the feathered coelurosaurs, which further led to the emergence of diverse and specialized predators. Among the early Ornithischian dinosaurs, Pisanosaurus and Lesothosaurus were discovered. The heterodontosaurus studied around the same time was about three feet long, had relatively long forelimbs, and had long fangs in its upper and lower jaws. Agilosaurus was also discovered from the Jurassic period in China. Ornithischian dinosaurs are divided into three main groups, Thyreophora, Ornithopods, and Marginocephalans. Thyreophora, such as Ankylosaurs and Stegosaurs, had powerful armor that protected them from predators. Ornithopods, including Hypsilophodonts and Hadrosaurs, were unarmored, but compensated for this by being fast and able to form groups. Marginocephals include Pachycephalosaurids and Ceratopsians, which stood out for their bizarre bony growths and horns, which were used for protection and in mating rituals. Thyreophora were distinguished by the presence of shells consisting of individual scuts or plates, which was their most striking feature. The earliest known Thyreophora was Scutellosaurus, which lived about 196 million years ago. Although its shell was similar to that of later Thyreophora such as Stegosaurs and Ankylosaurs, it otherwise resembled Lesothosaurus. Scutellosaurus had a long tail and could move on both two and four legs, which distinguished it from subsequent Thyreophora. Eoraptor, 
one of the most famous early dinosaurs, represented an important stage in evolution. Although Thyreophora and early dinosaurs such as the Eoraptor were very different in appearance, they had in common that they were at the origin of the enormous diversity of dinosaurs that existed during the Mesozoic era. Herbivorous dinosaurs such as giant sauropods and armored ankylosaurs and stegosaurs typically had small brains. Even later herbivorous dinosaurs such as Edmontosaurus, although having slightly larger brains, were still inferior in this regard to carnivorous dinosaurs. Predatory theropods tended to have relatively large brains and well-developed vision, which were necessary for successfully hunting fast prey. For example, T. rex had a particularly large brain compared to other carnivorous dinosaurs. At the top of the evolutionary chain of intelligence were theropods, most closely related to modern birds. Small dromaeosaurids such as Velociraptor and Trudentids such as Truden had brains comparable in size to those of modern birds. They also had large eyes, indicating advanced binocular vision, which allowed them to see in three-dimensional space, as well as keen hearing, making them one of the most intelligent and efficient hunters of their time. The study of dinosaur intelligence is often based on modern ideas about the intelligence of birds. Birds are traditionally considered less intelligent than mammals, and measuring their intelligence poses significant challenges. Many behavioral traits that may appear to be intelligence are often the result of instinct or imitation. Anatomically, Birds had relatively large brains compared to the size of their heads. Most species had well-developed vision and hearing, while the sense of touch and smell were developed only in some groups. Birds are capable of complex forms of communication using visual signals, sounds and songs. These traits may also be shared by their dinosaur ancestors, indicating their potential for complex behavior and communication. Thank you for watching our episode. Give it a thumbs up and leave your comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And also press the bell so you don't miss new and interesting videos from the Real Unreal channel.